Aave is a decentralized, non-custodial liquidity protocol that allows you to deposit and earn interest on your cryptocurrency, swap cryptocurrency, and take out cryptocurrency loans without having to give up any of your personal information or complete KYC procedures. Hey everyone and welcome, this is Robert with Altcoin Buzz and the first thing I want to point out about Aave is there are a whole lot of features. As you can see here, we've got a dashboard, we've got the ability to deposit, borrow, swap, stake, they've got governance, so there's a lot going on here. What I'm going to do to make this video a little bit easier is I'm going to put timestamps so that you can easily hop to the portion of the video that you find most interesting or that you want to watch the most. So with that being said, kind of the starting point for interacting with Aave is connecting your wallet. Now I'm already connected, but up here in the top right, you would simply connect your wallet and you would log in with your MetaMask or whatever else you have. As we go through this video, there's one point I need to make. I'm going to be operating on the Coven test network. That way I don't have to spend a whole lot of gas fees. So these APYs that you see here, like 94%, those are obviously not realistic. At the end of the video, I'll go through a de demo with a real mainnet wallet and show you kind of what you can expect to earn in terms of fees, transactions, everything like that. But for right now, I'm just trying to show you the process of how everything works. So the first thing that you're wanting to do, and that's kind of the starting point for getting to work with Aave is deposit some funds. So let's suppose that right now in my wallet, I have some Ethereum that I want to deposit on Aave. All I have to do is go to deposit, select the amount that I want to deposit, let's say 0.01 ETH and can continue. Now, here's the thing. I've already been playing around with this site a little bit, but if you have not deposited a certain token, you will have to do a initialize transaction and then an actual send transaction. So since I've already unlocked ETH, I simply have to click deposit it's going to ask me to confirm the transaction and again this is on the test network so things will go pretty fast however if you were doing this on mainnet and you might be waiting 20 30 minutes you can click this little box down here that says etherscan and it will actually bring up your transaction to show you in real time how much confirmation time is expected, the status of your transaction. That way you don't have to worry about your transaction getting lost somewhere. So we've deposited a little bit of Ether into our account. And if we go to dashboard, what we will see is that we do indeed have this Ether in our account. Now the cool thing is that once we deposit this into Aave, it is earning us this APY. Obviously it's not 94.55% in real life, but, um, and again, I'll show you this with the mainnet transaction later, it's going to be earning us that interest. So that's kind of the initial basic starting point to send our funds and begin earning interest. So what else can we do with Aave? Well, we can do a few things. Number one is that we can actually take out a loan against our collateral. So if you're familiar with other decentralized lending platforms like Compound, maker anything like that you kind of know how you can lock up collateral and take out a loan against it Aave works in much of the same way so you're going to want to make sure that this collateral is switched to yes by default it is going to be switched to yes but if you're in some situation where it was on no you simply have to conduct a transaction to flip that switch over to yes so what we're going to do now is we're going to simply click on borrow and we get to decide what asset that we want to borrow so Let's suppose that we want to borrow some Kyber network crystals. It gives us the amount that we can borrow and that depends on our health factor. So let's suppose that we're just going to borrow a little bit. Let's suppose we're only going to borrow two Kyber network crystals. So we're going to click continue and we have two options here. We have the option of choosing between stable APR and variable APR. And the cool thing about this is it actually helps us out and it tells us what might be more beneficial. So the stable rate acts as a fixed rate in the short term, but can be rebalanced in the longer term in response to the market changes. If we want to go with variable rate, variable rates a little bit lower, but it's also a little bit more unpredictable. So it gives us the choice of picking between those variable and the stable rates. We're going to go with the stable APR and we're simply going to click borrow it's going to confirm this transaction and then once this all goes through we will log back into our testnet metamask and we will see that we actually have those kyber network crystals in the wall okay so i know things look a little bit off because we're doing this on testnet but i already had uh, 10,000 kyber network crystals in my metamask you can now that see that i have 10,002 so those kyber network crystals are in my wallet and if we go back to my dashboard 
we can see on the left hand side I have a deposit of Ethereum that's being used as collateral for this loan on the Kyber Network Crystal. So let's suppose that I want to repay that loan. I can simply click on repay and it's going to give me the option. Do I want to repay with my current collateral or do I want to repay with my wallet balance? So if I decide to repay from collateral, it's basically going to sell off a portion of my Ethereum required to repay this. On the other hand, I also have the option of repaying with my wallet balance. So I can simply log into my wallet. I can repay that two Kyber Network crystals plus a small amount of interest that I owe, which is what I'm going to do. So um, I'm going to have to approve. And this was what I was telling you about. The first time you interact with a token, you're going to have to do an approved transaction. And you are also going to have to do a real transaction. So you approve the transaction once, then you actually go through and send the transaction. So not a huge deal, but just pay, pay in mind that this is not something you're going to want to do if you're borrowing four or five dollars because you are going to get eaten alive by these gas fees. So just keep it in mind, um, these small kind of transactions, you really want to think ahead with what you're doing. Obviously, we're going to repay this loan. We go back to our dashboard and now we see that all we have in our account is our deposit of that Ether. So another way that you can earn through Aave is through staking. Now, when you go to stake, there are two separate options that you have to stake. Obviously, we have Aave in our wallet, so that's what we're going to be staking. And if you click on this, they give you a little bit of the overview and some of the risks. And there's really two main things that you need to wear. The first thing is that staking your cryptocurrency, specifically your Aave, helps to contribute to the security of the Aave protocol. In the event of a shortfall event, the safety module, which is where you're staking your Aave tokens, can use up to the 30% of the assets to cover the deficit and make up for that shortfall. So when you stake, you are taking a little bit of a risk. However, you do get rewarded for taking that risk. So let's suppose we want to stake Aave. We're simply going to click max. And again, it tells us the warning. It says Aave holders can stake their Aave in the safety module and earn safety incentives. In the case of a shortfall event, up to 30% of your stake can be slashed to cover the deficit. Stakers receive safety incentives in the form of Aave tokens in exchange for taking this risk. You will need to activate a 10 day cooling period before you are able to withdraw your stake. So keep that in mind. It's kind of like if you're on Hive or something like that, you can power up, power down. It takes time for that power up or power down to go through and convert into a more liquid form. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click I understand. We're going to one, approve this transaction. So again, we're running into those ETH gas fees, confirm the transaction, and then we're actually going to stake the transaction in a separate confirmation. So what we see is that we have staked our one Ave. Now let's suppose that we did want to withdraw this. We would have to activate the cooldown period. Now because I am on the test net, it's saying that my cooldown period is only going to be 180 seconds, but keep in mind normally that this would take me 10 days. So yes, you do earn staking rewards rewards from staking your Aave. However, keep in mind that you are locking it up for a minimum of a 10 day period. All right, so we entered our cooldown period and now we click unstake and it's allowing us to unstake that Aave. So we're going to go ahead and click max, unstake, unstake Aave, and then we will confirm the transaction in our MetaMask. And then we see that it has left our stake here. And if we log back into our MetaMask, we will see that we have that one Aave back in our MetaMask. So that's a quick overview of how to stake, how to unstake your Aave in the protocol. So in addition to allowing us to deposit and borrow and land, Aave also gives us the option of swapping cryptocurrencies within the protocol. So what I'm going to do to swap is simply go to swap and then I'm going to select the asset when I want to go from the asset that I want to go to. And remember that the first time we do a transaction, it's going to have to unlock the asset. So this is the first time we're doing a transaction with KNC, so we'll have to approve that. And again, this is all on the test network, so we are saving on some of these gas fees. We will go ahead and click swap. Once again, it will ask us to confirm the transaction. And we see that the swap has been successful. If we go back to the dashboard, we will see that the Kyber Network crystals have all been converted into Ether. In this portion of the video, I want to actually log in with my mainnet account and give you a little bit of an overview of what you can expect to make when you either deposit or you borrow from Aave or you participate in their staking program. So to do this, I simply log in with my MetaMask 
and what you'll see is on the markets tab they have various assets and I'm just going to sort this for you by the deposit APY. So one thing you'll notice is that in general, these stable coins have the highest interest rate, so 12.3% for true USD, Binance USD, USDC coin, Tether, they're all around 8%. So this is something that I found to be true regardless of really what DeFi platform you're on. In general, the stable coins are going to have the highest interest rate. If you go down to something like basic attention token or Uniswap, the rate is going to be a little bit lower. As far as paying interest through borrowing again you can see that the interest rate on those stable coins is going to be a little bit higher so 27.45 for borrowing true usd 32.45 for borrowing under stable now that's again i kind of talked about it a little bit earlier but in general you're going to pay a higher interest rate for that protection of having the stable borrowing rate so that's again it's not financial advice at all but that's just kind of a general overview of what you could expect to make if you were lending on this platform now another thing that i covered in the testnet video but the interest rate was all messed up is the staking APY. So here you can see that staking Ave in this security module is giving us about a 5.53% APY. So um, if you remember from the testnet video, I think it was showing 0% and then the interest rate for Ether was like 99%. So let's just go back here just to kind of compare and see, let's actually see what Ether would be. So yeah, you can see here that uh, Ether is not 99% at all. It is about 0.19%. So just kind of to put things in perspective, whatever interest rates you saw during the test net portion of the video, just keep in mind that those are not realistic. There was just for demonstration to show you how the platform worked. Now, one thing that you will not see on the Aave kind of homepage, however, is an important feature of Aave is their flash loans. Now, as their official documentation points out, flash loans really are pushing the limits of DeFi. And for those of you who may not know, a flash loan is a transaction that is both initiated and settled in the same block. So again, it's kind of an advanced concept. Um, going in depth into it is really beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, just know that Aave does offer this. And if you look through their documentation, they will actually point you to a few tools that can help you set up your own flash loan. So for a combo, is basically a build a block kind of system for initiating a flash loan so you can go on Aave and you can use a flash loan for different purposes you can link different blocks together and kind of set up your own contract again an advanced feature not something I'm going to go into in this video but it is something to know that it is there for you and you can use it if you know how to do so and you feel comfortable with taking that risk all right, so I know some people kind of just want a general overview. They just want to know how it works and how to get started. And then some people want a little bit more in-depth explanation. So in this part of the video, I wanted to cover a little bit more of what's going on, what Aave has implemented to kind of protect these people that are giving the loans and how this works as far as liquidations and stuff like that for you as a borrower. So if we go to our dashboard, I've just taken out again on the test net, a small loan here of Kyber Network Crystals. And we can say that I've borrowed about 548 US dollars worth of crypto. My health factor is 1145. Now your health factor basically represents the safety of your loan. So in general, we want to think about collateral, right? When we talk about DeFi, we're doing over collateralized loans. So if I want to borrow $1,000, I will have to actually lock up, let's say $12,000, right? And there's going to be a factor associated with that. So if that factor is 0.8 and I deposit $1,000, I can take a maximum loan up to 800. So here my collateral is valued at $7,600. The loan to value ratio tells us how much of a loan that we can take out. So let me try and find some details here. All right, so for this specific example, the maximum loan to value is 80%. So that means if I deposit $1,000, I can take out an $800 loan. Now, here's the thing that gets tricky with DeFi. Because cryptocurrency, the prices are always going up and down, I can take out up to $800, but let's suppose that the value of my collateral is still $1,000 and the value of my loan increases, right? So I start accruing interest on my loan or to flip things around, let's suppose that the, the price of my collateral goes down, right? I'm going to be liquidated once the outstanding value of that loan is 82.5%.
So I can take out up to 80%. So that's giving me a 2.5% margin of safety. However, um, it's prudent to maybe not take out right up to that limit. So you might only want to take out 70% so that way you don't get liquidated. Now when a liquidation happens, not only do they sell off part of your collateral to repay that loan, but there's typically a penalty assessed with that as well. So if you're considering lending cryptocurrency, a lot of times people will say, well, what happens if someone doesn't pay back their loan? That's what this is built for. And kind of to give you an example too, if you are a borrower and let's suppose that you are unable to pay back your loan. Um, I actually did this once when MakerDAO and was first on Coinbase. They had their Coinbase Earn program and they were telling you how to take out a CDP using your Ethereum and I didn't understand how to pay it back. So I thought, gee, if I don't pay this back, you know, I'm going to get taken to court or something like that. But in, with DeFi, that's not the way it works. With decentralized finance, you have to over collateralize your loan. And really the worst thing that happens if you can't pay back that loan, you just lose that collateral. You have that liquidation penalty. So that's something to be aware of. It is, it is all there. It's all working behind the scenes in Aave. And again, I didn't include that in the earlier part of the video because I didn't want to get people confused. But if you're wondering how it works, that's how the uh, over collateralization, that's how the LTV values and everything like that work to protect the lenders and also kind of ensure that those borrowers don't default on their loans and that everything works out. Another thing that I did want to cover about the Aave token specifically is that yes, Aave token is used for securing the protocol through that safety module. However, Aave token is also important as a governance token. So if you go to the governance proposals here, you can see that the Aave token is really the key for decentralized governance, right? So a lot of these DeFi protocols in general, we're seeing them switching over to a token-based governance model. So instead of having the founding executive team making all of the decisions, they're trying to put this power back in the hands of the people. And that's another use case of the Aave token. So in closing, that's a general overview of the Aave protocol. We learned about some of the interesting features that the protocol has, including being able to lend cryptocurrency and earn interest, borrow cryptocurrency, swap cryptocurrency, stake tokens and earn rewards. And we learned about the support that Aave offers for flash loans. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you have any comments, any projects that you'd like us to take a look into, be sure to leave it below so that we can check it out. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.